Hi guys, it's uh, the third instalment of Where's Wally now. Um, I'm in my new room and it's taken quite a bit longer to get to this point uh, than I thought it was going to take. I thought this was going to happen a lot quicker. Generally, the room's okay. I think I'm pretty happy with the light. I've got my light my softbox set up in pretty much the same position I had in the old room slightly different angle but it's roughly in the same spot because of some other changes I do need to have my camera just a little bit further around to my left than what I did before I used to have the camera over on that angle where now it's on that angle I am conscious of the fact that the microphone is probably in the shot uh, so I might have to do a bit of playing around with that. And as you can probably hear, oh my God, it's like King Tut's tomb in here. It's so live. Um, I have plans. Actually, I could probably improve things by closing the door. Yeah. Oh, that does, that does improve things actually. <laughs> Half of it was the echo out in the hall. But I am going to get some acoustic treatment in here to absorb some of the reflections. Basically, you've got what we in Australia call hardy plank. It's basically a composite wood panelling. Probably goes by a different name in your country, but I'm sure it's the same kind of stuff. And of course, when you have parallel walls of a non-porous material like that, then you get standing waves that bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's why you get that reverb. Uh, so... It's all part of the plan and it'll come with time and in the meantime I will run D-Reverb plugins to try and soak up some of those acoustic reflections. But yeah, it's getting there. It is getting there. Um, it has been a, a, a slow process because there's been so much other stuff that has needed to be done and, you know, she who must be obeyed comes first. So, you know, you've got to do the things that, you know, have to be done around the house before you get to play with your toys. <laughs> so, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there slowly. So my aim is over the next, um, optimistically, I'll say over the next week. Uh, realistically, it might be the next couple of weeks. But I hope to sit down and spend a t bit of time going through the release notes for 4.4 and I realize you know it's it's now been out for five months and most people will have already worked out what's new and what is of benefit to them and whatever but I do just for the for the sake of completeness I want to get a new features 4.4 video out before 4.6 comes out at Christmas or at the, the solstice. So yeah, that's the plan. How long it'll take me to get the room treated acoustically? I don't know. It'll get there. It'll get there in time. But it will be good to be start, you know, producing some content again. I did feel like at the very least I needed to at least let you know where I was up to because I had kind of suggested that by the end of October I'd be producing content again and it was just not to be. In terms of where we're living, absolutely love it. The house is fantastic. This house was literally built about 18 months ago. Or, sorry, the, the construction was completed about 18 months ago. That was when the uh, occupancy certificate was issued for this house. Yeah, it's the, obviously the newest house Kath and I have ever lived in or either of us have ever lived in in our entire lives. And the best part is moving in and going, there is nothing I have to fix. There is no guttering that's rusting. There's no chipped paint that needs to be touched up. There's no carpet that's threadbare and worn and needs to be ripped up and replaced. There's <laughs> all the appliances work it's uh so it's really nice to to just be able to move in and just start enjoying it you know without having to you know do crap to fix it <laughs> so that's that's really nice and the neighborhood is amazing i said in the last video where's wally part two that i was really gonna miss springfield because 
you know, we had that beautiful rural aspect, got the sound of birds in the trees and all that sort of stuff. Here, the block that we bought has uh, the, the street is out there and right across from us is a nature corridor that can never be built on. And it's not massively deep. It's probably only about 50 metres deep, but it's full of gum trees and lots of native flora and fauna. And I, I, I'm still baffled by this, but this neighbourhood is actually quieter than where we were before. I thought where we were was great, and it was, but this place, you can stand out on the footpath, you know, at this time of night, which is, what time is it? 7.30, 20 to 8. And it's just dead silent. We are in the second stage of... Uh, a housing estate. The second stage is now complete. The third stage is sort of under construction at the moment. There are maybe 50 or 60 houses in the third stage that are already occupied and there's probably probably another 80 or 100 that are currently under construction and then another, I don't know, a couple of hundred blocks that haven't yet been sold. And then there's going to be a fourth stage to the estate as well. So over time, I'm sure the quietness will potentially be eroded um, as more people live here. But um, for now, it is gorgeous. I'm very happy with myself. Before we left Springfield, I made a promise to myself that once we got here, I was going to get the push bike out and go for a ride every day and take Randy for a run. Oh, sad news, Aztec. We had to put him down, uh, what was it, about 10 days ago. So he got to see the new house, um, but yeah, not for long. He, uh, he, he just went downhill pretty quick. Uh, he lost, I, I got home Friday evening a week and a half ago and he had completely lost the ability to stand up um, and I had to lift him up and he, you know, he was a 20-odd kilo dog, so it was a fair weight. It was more than Kath could handle. Um, and so that night, Kath and I had to basically take two-hour shifts through the night. Yeah, one of us would sleep for two hours and then we'd sit up with him for two hours and whenever I was up with him, I'd carry him outside. But for the whole time from midday... Friday when I got home, um, there was a reason for why I was home early, it doesn't matter, to the time we took him to the vet on Saturday, he, I, he didn't eat, he didn't drink, and I didn't see him go to the toilet, and it was pretty obvious that it was all over, so that was kind of sad, and um, yeah, anyway, but it is what it is, but anyway, sorry, back to the story, riding the push bike with Randy, um, so we got in here, and <laughs> I have a shed on the back of the block uh, and obviously as you can imagine when you move it's just like oh just chuck it in the shed we'll deal with it later so everything got thrown in the shed and it took me about two weeks before I could actually get everything out of the shed and get to my push bike because <laughs> my push bike was one of the first things that went in so it was right up against the back wall but in the three and a half weeks since then Randy, I think I think it worked out. It's been twenty three days, and out of those twenty three days, I've taken him out for a run nineteen of those mornings, and the four that I didn't were four days when it was raining. And I will confess, uh, I I am a little bit nervous about riding in the rain, simply because about oh, I don't know. 15, 16 years ago, I fell off in the rain and broke my wrist. And so I'm a little bit gun shy about riding on wet roads. And I know that the bitumen itself is fine. It's just the painted lines that can be dodgy. But anyway, so yeah, so been out riding with Randy every morning. Oh, the first day, seriously, I rode, oh, it's about two or three hundred meters up to the top of our street. And it's a shallow incline. It's not it's not steep. It's not stupidly hilly like Springfield was. There's a bit of an incline. 
And honestly, I was just about dead by the time I got to the corner of our street. And um, yeah, and just gradually worked it up. Yesterday went out, uh, we did seven and a half kilometers yesterday, did six and a half this morning. I, I'm so happy. I've gone down a, a, a clothing size on my pants from 34 to 32. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And the dog is just loving it. And you would recall, right, that he was a little problematic in those first, you know, 12, 18 months after we got him. He's just chewing everything, ripping everything to pieces, just constantly being painful. And there were many times where I, I really wanted to get rid of him. And honestly, he just needed exercise. And I think, you know, I probably always knew that, but just wasn't, um, I, I was too set in my routine. And that was the whole beauty of moving and, and, and why I made that promise to myself before we move. And I said this to Kath, I said, you know, the, 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 the moment you move is the ideal time to set up new good habits, you know. So when we move, I want to get out and I want to take him for a ride every morning in that extra time that I've now got in the mornings where, you know, I'm not having to commute for an hour and three quarters. I only have a one hour commute, that extra 45 minutes, that can be our exercise time, you know. And, um, and, I, and I stand by that, you know, that when you move house, suddenly all of your routines are thrown out the window because everything's new again and you've got to, you know, set up new routines. And so what better time to set up a, a good, you know, exercise regime for yourself. So, so I'm happy with myself so far. I know it's only been three weeks and that's, that's not long enough for it to be a lifetime habit just yet. But it is absolutely my intention to stick with this, you know, forever. That is my goal. And like I said, the dog is just loving it and is so much better behaved. He is so, uh, he's just a dream now. He's just great. Um, so <laughs> Kath and I have this routine. Like I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is pull my shorts on, put my shoes on, jump on the bike and off we go for a ride before I've eaten anything. And um, so I do that in the morning and then in the evening, Kath takes him out for a walk. And uh, yeah, so she's out with him at the moment, taking him for a walk. So hence why I've got a few minutes to, uh, to chat to you guys. Anyway, I'm just rambling about my life. This is not really relevant to Dark Table, but I do have to say thank you to Matthew from Paris. Well, not really Paris. He's actually north of Paris, but uh, he's, he's in France who helped me uh, with some issues I was having with Manjaro Linux. We got together on a Google Meet call uh, on the weekend just gone and uh, he helped me sort out some stuff. So I've now got the latest version of Darktable installed. I still have not finished processing images from Alaska. I only on the weekend, like on Sunday night, yeah, Sunday night after Matthew and I had had our little chat uh, and we got Darktable installed, I then went through all of my images and culled down to the images that I plan to process got it down to about 270 images. So now I've got to gradually work my way through processing all of those images. And, you know, that's a slow process, you know, particularly if you want to handle each one with, with care and finesse, you know, I don't want to just slap a preset on everything because that doesn't deliver the, the best result. So yeah, so that's where I'm at with Alaska. Uh, and then of course, there's all the multi-image panos that I shot. I probably shot, I say all of, probably about half a dozen that I will need to process at some point as well. So yeah, lots happening. Definitely looking forward to getting back into creating some content. I have really missed it, believe it or not, but it has just been one crazy manic year. It really has. You know, I mean, we spent pretty much all of the period from March through to August driving up here from Gosford to look at, um, 
you know, almost every weekend. And then we found this place like two weeks before we went to Alaska. And then we had to hope like hell we could get, you know, contracts signed and exchanged before we, um, before we left the country so that the settlement period could be, you know, winding down whilst we were out of the country. And that, of course, came to fruition. And of course, that then meant that we came home. We had 16 days from the time we landed back in Sydney to the time we had to move out of Springfield and into this place because we had settlement for both properties on the same day. So that was just manic, you know, those 16 days, it was just packing, packing, packing every spare minute of the day. You know, we've moved up here and then it's been manic, 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 just trying to unpack. And then, you know, we've, we've lost Aztec, of course. Um, over the course of this year, Kath lost her dad and just three weeks ago, I think it was, she lost a cousin. So it's been a bit of a, a rough year for goodbyes, you know, certainly for Kath, you know, um, two family members and the dog and the dog's a family member. So call it three family members mm. and farewell to the old house and, you know, <laughs> hello to the new house. And she'd just taken delivery of the car that she ordered in May of 22. So that's taken 18 months to deliver. She got that last Friday. So she's had that for what, five, six days. So yeah, it's just been a, a crazy busy year. Max was back down from Darwin in Sydney in July because he had a training course on at the army base in Sydney. And we caught up with him for 24 hours. He was down here for a you know, a week and a bit and, and 24 hours was the sum total of time we got to spend with him. And when we said goodbye to him, Kath was, you know, very sad again that he was going. And, and I said to her, I said, you know what, the back end of this year is going to go so freaking quick. You'll be seeing him at Christmas before you know it. And sure enough, you know, Alaska came and went and the move came and went. And then we found out he was coming back down to Sydney again in October. So he was here like three weeks ago and we caught up with him for, again, just a couple of hours. So that was good. But then he had, to, you know, he's gone back to Darwin, but he'd be back here two weeks from today. And uh, he's going to be here for, I think he's here for about eight days. Then he's going for four days. And then he comes back on the 18th of December, which incidentally is the first day of my two weeks of annual leave and well, my next two weeks of annual leave. So I'm going to get to hang out with him during the time that he's down here. He'll be here with us until Boxing Day and then Boxing Day he goes back to Darwin. Kath is on holidays from basically the 22nd, I think it is, the Friday. Yeah, I think Friday's the 22nd, Monday's the 25th, if I remember correctly. Um, and so I'll get to spend a week with her before I go back to work on the 3rd, I think it's the 3rd of January. So yeah, so this, you know, the back half of this year has just flown by for us because there's just been so many things happening. So yeah, anyway, I'm rambling, wanted to let you know where I'm at let you see that the room is coming together slowly. Uh, still some work to be done. I think I'm okay with the light. I did a bit of a, a just a, a test record before I sat down to record this and uh, I played it back just looking at it on the back of the camera and I thought, oh yeah, that, that light looks okay. So hopefully it works. Hopefully the mic can sit there without being too obtrusive. I mean, I say all that, it may not even be visible. I just don't know. I won't know until I actually look at the footage. But anyway, that's where we're at. That's where Wally's at right now. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, you'll see some new content. That is the aim. All right, guys, take care wherever you are. Look after yourselves and uh, I will speak to you soon. Cheers.